Hi, welcome back. We're back in the kitchen here at Treetop Lodge, Connie's Kitchen, episode 20. Wow. And we just turned 2,000 views on YouTube. Yay! And here's my husband again. Chris is here to, Hello. to cook with us today. And uh, he's going to do one of his favorite dishes. And he, I guess you should just take over and talk. He's going to do steamed mussels, right? Yes. You do that. Well, I'm going to decorate for Halloween. Oh, okay. So the camera's all on me now. Anyway, like I said, cooking uh, steamed mussels. And what we start with is you get some mussels from uh, your local grocery store or fish market. And these are what the little suckers look like right here. So you get yourself a couple of pounds of these. And then the first thing you have to do is once you get them, you have to rinse them all off, make sure they're nice and clean, the outside shells. And each of them has this little, if you want to zoom in there, little beard on them. Oh, I haven't seen that. Yeah, that's a cute little beard. It is. They're like little wild turkeys. So you want to pluck them off <laughs> just like that. And throw them in the garbage bowl. And throw them in your garbage bowl. There's another one there. Now this batch that I did before we started the show, I did not many of them had a lot of beards, so I didn't have to do a lot of work. But would sometimes that, you get them, it varies. Would that hurt anything <clears throat> if you left them on there, or is it just texture? It's just texture. You don't want to eat them. And the other thing is, um, when you get your mussels, you want to make sure, or you want to make sure that all of them are closed like that. Fully closed, just little shells. Because if you get them when they're open like this, or where they're, <laughs> even worse, cracked and open, these you want to throw away. These you don't want to cook. Meat's inside. It's bad. They've gone bad, basically. So these, right away. But not bad. I bought a pound of these at Meyer, and I only had two bad ones. So that's pretty good. Yeah. So the next thing you want to do, well, actually, we'll set these aside. While he's talking about that, I'm going to start chopping an apple for dessert, so I'm just going to let him keep talking. You go ahead and get what you need. All right. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to cook the mussels in a, a stock or a broth. We're going to make a, I don't know what you call it. What's the word for it? A stock. A stock. I guess we're going to make a stock. And two of our main ingredients we're going to start with are garlic and shallots. And we're going to take our garlic and our shallots, and we're going to chop them up real fine. Now for chopping, I love to use a fillet knife. That's my favorite to use. It's delicate. You can get the close-in work that you want. The one that I stole it from. Yes, he stole mine. I use fillet knives on everything, <laughs> from chopping in the kitchen to gutting deers. I think fillet knives are the best to use. We don't say gutting deer on our show. We don't say gutting deer show. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. To gently field dressing the deer for there preparation. You there you go. Now we're gonna chop up, and you want when you're chopping, you want your shallots and your garlic to be like paper thin, or as finely as you can chop them. See that? You can almost see through it. Mm -hmm. So you want to get everything chopped up, dice it up, nice and small. Because you're not going to cook it should those look so like this. So much as you're going to sweat them. You're going to sweat them, yeah. Yeah. So basically, you want to get them nice and fine, and uh, I would say probably, depending on how much stock you're making, about I'd say two or three shallots and about uh, five or six cloves of garlic. I mean, some people may say that's a lot of garlic, but you know, people who think there's too much, I mean, they're idiots. You can never have too much garlic. There's no such thing There's as no too such much. thing as too much garlic unless you're a vampire. Oh, that smells so good. Now, for you single people, you probably don't want to eat any garlic. But when you're married, you know, it just doesn't matter anymore. So you can eat all the garlic you want. So <laughs> Thank you, honey. All right. Did you need me to do something else or am I flipping it back over to you, darling? Well, you know what? I was thinking because we're going to make orzo mm -hmm. with the... I was thinking we should di finally dice some red pepper. Okay. Just for color in the orzo. All right. Okay, and so I'm why guessing do I'll that? do that. Yeah, and I'll talk about what I'm doing here. I took one of my favorites, a honey crisp apple, mm. and instead of cooking it down with all the stuff that I usually cook it down with, I'm going to mix it with something that I already had. I had, you didn't know this, some leftover bourbon caramel sauce that I made. <sighs> so I'm going to use that as the base for the apples, and then believe it or not, I made ice cream. No, you did. I did. You did? On episodes 18 and 19, which are airing right now, you saw me make recipes that viewers have sent me. And I didn't have time to make that one because it, it's easy to make, but then it has to sit in the freezer for 12 hours. Wow. So I made it up last night so that we could serve it today with our bourbon caramel fresh honey crisp applesauce. Mm. Yum, yum. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take this and throw it back on the stove and let it simmer until we're ready to serve it. The apples will cook down pretty quick. And I left the skin on. I know a lot of people peel them. I like the texture of the skin on the apples. So. Who doesn't? So what are we going to need to gather in order to build your stock? Well, we're going to need some uh, vegetable broth or chicken broth. 
dealer's choice, and uh, dry white wine, and some butter, and some olive oil. Um, you can, instead of white wine if you want, because it's seasonal, you can use some hard apple cider, or you could use a nice Belgian beer, which has kind of a citrus flavor to it. Or if you want to go with like a Caribbean type thing, you can even use coconut milk. Me, I'm a traditionalist. I like to go with some dry white wine, excuse me, either a Pinot Grigio or a Chardonnay, something like that. I mean, all white wine is basically garbage anyway, so it's good to use for cooking. <laughs> no, it's not. But, well, you know, well, I mean, white wine's fine for like, you know, the book club meeting, but it's not a real wine. <laughs> I'm Italian, and to me, red wine's the only true wine, and the only true wine is Italian wine. French wine doesn't count. Nothing from France counts. All right. <laughs> Well, you're just making making friends all over the place here I today, know, aren't you? I am. So anyway, the whole point of this is super simple. What super you're going to make? It's I very mean, easy to make. Anyone could do. I this. think it's even a government official could cook one of these dishes. I think it takes longer to talk about it than it does to prepare it. Probably does. That's why I'm talking so much. No, if we um, we're going to serve it with orzo today. Yes. Would uh, which is orzo kind of comes out tasting almost like a risotto because it is pasta, so it's soft, but it has that rice texture to it. Yeah. So it, but it's quicker, and that's what we do up here. We do quick. So you can you can make what'll turn out to be a very elegant meal mm -hmm. in less than thirty minutes. Right. So that's 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 what, well you know that's what we do up here. Exactly. So when we come back, we're going to start building the stock, and then that's going to need to simmer for a little bit. Yeah, just a couple minutes. Yep. And then then at the last, then we will throw the mussels in and watch them do their thing. Mm -hmm. So very cool. All right. Well, we're going to gather ingredients. Okay. And I threw the apples and the caramel sauce on because all it needs to do is heat. And that's just going to sit there and heat until we're ready for it. All right. With our ice cream experiment. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, it's fun. These people send me these things, and this is a perfect place to try them out, right? Absolutely. So Absolutely. sometimes we do our favorite recipes. Mm -hmm. And some of the recipes that have been sent to me are becoming some of my favorite recipes. Mm -hmm. Like the lava cake. Oh, lava cake's excellent. Yeah. And, and, excellent. And, and now I figured out how to do it right, so I'll mm -hmm. do it again. So, anywho, we'll be back in a few. We're going to gather some ingredients and uh, get started on our stock. We'll see you then. <laughs> The Agent Orange Education Program is coming to the Oxford area. Presented by the Vietnam Veterans of America and Christ the King Church in Oxford. Learn about the health risks of Agent Orange exposure at the Agent Orange Town Hall. October 24th at Christ the King Church, 1550 West Drainer Road. Registration at 11 a.m. and Town Hall at noon. We're back, and it looks like you've got everything you need, mm -hmm. to. so you take over and do what you're going to do. All right. I'll well, hold to the make wine. the stock, we're going to start by putting a couple of tablespoons of butter, which usually is about two pieces, about like that. Although, bring that back here. You can never have too much butter, so you know what? Why not? One more. And then we'll take a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. Again, can never have too much. He's so. actually measuring things. Isn't Why that not cute? one more? Isn't that cute? Put it in my hand. So now we put our and you want to. Oh, I forgot to mention you want to use a stock pot, something about this big, depending on how many mussels you're making. You're gonna need the lid for that when you steam it, right? Yep. Okay. Then we're gonna take our diced shallots. I'm gonna throw those in with the olive oil and the butter. And we're gonna take our chopped garlic and we're gonna throw that in too. And now we are going to basically put it on the stove and heat it and move it around until the uh, garlic and the onions kind of marry. They kind of get about, they kind of take on a clear consistency. Translucent. You, translucent. You don't want them to brown though. And I need a spatula. Spatula or a spoon? A yeah, spoon's yep. fine. So we're going to start heating it up over here. Use the front turn burner, on it's the, faster. All right. If I can figure out how the oven works. Or the stove. Well, how does the oven work? That's a good question. Let go. Isn't okay. this riveting TV? So, you want to zoom in over here. I'm going to basically mix together our butter, our olive oil, our onions, our garlic, our butter. I mix it in. This is going to need a few minutes over a nice high heat. Doesn't take long at all. Doesn't take long. And with those ingredients, you end up with such a rich. Oh, I can smell it already. Mmm. 
when the, when the parsley goes in and the fresh lemon and the white wine. That's kind of rude you mention how it smells because the folks on TV can't smell I it. know, that's why I keep saying you have to come up here so you can enjoy these things with us and you can get the full effect. I mean, because it's, you know, fresh parsley, come on. Nothing smells fresher than that. And you're going to play with some, some different salts today too, right? Yes. Yeah, I pulled out my salt collection so that he could play with different salts. Salt is great. Actually, I have high blood pressure, so I shouldn't be using any of this, but I don't really care what my doctor says. No. So, we're going to well, use a little blue, in our stock, once it gets going, we're going to use a little blue Persian salt. Uh, we're not going to knock over the wine bottle. We're going to use a little red Hawaiian salt. And we're going to use some Mediterranean sea salt. I couldn't actually remember all three of those. That's why I had to look at the labels. Well, and again, we've used these before, and I use these at home. When you're using these types of salts, you're not using as much as when you're using table salt because it's such a full flavor. And believe it or not, each one of them has, has a different flavor. I'm thinking the red salt from Hawaii must be high in iron because I know that um, Hawaii's soil is high in iron and volcanic ash. Well, actually, that interestingly enough, that is where the red salt gets its color is from the volcanoes. Yep. So now what are we going to do with the lemons and stuff? Well, we've got to wait until the but broth. You can, you can measure, though. Well, no, I don't, I'm not going to measure. Oh. Well, while that's uh, cooking, I'll keep an eye on that. We need basically a half a cup of white wine. As I said, you know, white wine is basically garbage, so you can use any one. Oh, that smells good. Oh, that so, smells good. actually, I have to see what actually a half a cup. This is my measuring cup at home, so I have to turn it around. So, we need a half cup of the white wine. <laughs> it's so cute that you're measuring things. <laughs> I know. There's a half cup of white wine. And then we want to take either. Um, Vegetable stock or chicken stock. Here I've got, or I'm sorry, broth. You can use stock or broth. Today I'm using vegetable stock. But as I said, you could substitute a hard cider or a, a Belgian beer or even coconut milk. But I don't like coconut, so we're not going to use that. Well, that's a lot sweeter too, no. don't you think? Yeah, and coconut, some... coconut tends to react badly with the digestive system anyway. I think so, you're just about translucent. Just there. about. That's the thing too. You want to cook these until it's translucent. You don't want them to brown, because then you kind of get a, maybe a little faint burn taste. This so is this a very is delicate flavor when it's done. Very delicate. Because shallots are different than um, regular onions. Say red onions or green onions. Shallots have more of a floral taste and nose to them, almost a piquant uh, fragrance. And when you simmer them down like this, they just release all that beautiful aroma. You and do. the mussels are delicate, so you don't, you're not going to put something heavy on the mussels when you just want to steam them and bring them open and have them gather up that wonderful aroma that you're creating. So now I think we're ready to add our mixture of white wine and broth. We'll pour that in. And then we'll throw in some freshly chopped parsley. You can use regular parsley or Italian flat leaf. But this not is cilantro. Right, but not cilantro. Uh, regular parsley is nice, but I prefer uh, Italian flat leaf because I'm Italian and everything that's Italian is better. True Italian from, you know, not the little islands off the boot, but the real Italians. <laughs> and then we're going to add a little fresh squeezed lemon. You never want to use a bottled lemon. I don't like that le lemon juice. I prefer my lemons juice to be fresh squeezed. Well, whenever you have access to fresh, you always have to use use it. There's, there's so nothing like that. You can use like a half. It. I like to use a whole because like with garlic I'd say you can never have too much lemon. You're not zesting today? No zesting. No, okay. Zesting you know, changed my life too I know. Much. Zesting, well, it's, it's an important thing. Now, are we so done with this? What about yep. the salts? Yeah, we're going to add some of our salts now. Where'd the salts go? They're right there. Yeah, let's see. I've got the water turned on for the orzo. The orzo just takes a few minutes to cook. And we'll toss it with the red peppers. And uh, pretty soon we'll have lunch. So this is going to be wonderful. So we'll put in a little of the Persian salt. This is standing here smelling the lemons. Now a little mm. bit of the Hawaiian salt. Aren't those fun? They are fun. I'm I having it. so much fun. I just got lucky at the store one day that they were marking them all down. I thought, what a great time to try them. Because they, they do seem expensive, but they all go right. a long way. You don't want it too salty, but I figure a mixture of the different salts. So now, now this, we're going to bring this back up to a boil and then we're going to put our mussels in. We're going to bring it up to a boil and let it simmer a little bit, right? We'll let it simmer just a couple minutes. Bring it to a boil, let it simmer a few minutes and then we'll put our mussels in. And then we'll be ready for lunch. 
Then we'll get ready for lunch. Okay, cool. So I've got my apples in, on there. They're just uh, <coughs> cooking and caramelizing in their bourbon caramel sauce. Mm. Look at that. The smell. Smells good. Uh, on a future show, we'll make bourbon caramel sauce together. Yum. So when we come back, we're going to throw in the mussels, we're going to toss in some orzo, and we're going to build our dessert and have lunch. So join us back here shortly, and I'll just continue cleaning up behind him because, well, that's what I do. <laughs> oh, that's why you get married. So that's someone to clean up after that's you. Right. <laughs> Great. Attention all local veterans. Free eye exams are coming to American Legion Post 108. The event is sponsored in part by Post 108 and by the Michigan Society of Eye Physicians and Surgeons. Certified eye care specialists and surgeons will provide free care to veterans and their families. Saturday, October 31st from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. at American Legion Post 108. And we're going to put it all together. <laughs> we're going to put it all together. You know, the, you know, it. It. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. You but forgot what you're going to say. Was, so anyway, what are you going to do with those now? You're not going to uh, throw the ice in there, right? Could do a right? puppet show. No. Hey, okay. <laughs> going to do it. Please, Doctor Gus. <laughs> now that's okay, folks. They're already mostly dead. <clears throat> so now we're going to take our mussels and this lovely ice bowl. You want to keep them cool too. So keep them in the fridge or keep them on a bowl of ice. It's important they stay cold. You don't want your seafood going bad. <laughs> Now that our uh, stock is up to a lovely boil, oh look at that, we're going to put our mussels in. You're only going to need a few minutes, basically you're going to cook them until they open. Oh that smells so good. Oh it does. Ah. Hmm. All true Italians love good seafood. Mm -hmm. This is something he ran across quite by accident, because when I first met him, the man wouldn't touch seafood to save his life. But I sweet-talked him into trying lobster, and it's all over. The man eats crab and, and oysters and mussels and lobster and shrimp and the whole thing, and cooks a lot of it, so that's great. Um, it's like a whole world you were missing before me, hon. It was. I know. I'm going to put them in and kind of stir them around here. Already some are starting to open. It's the steam that's causing them to open, right? Yep, the steam causes them to open. You can put the lid on or you can leave it off. Put the lid on for a minute, get some steam build up in there. Then we'll stir take the it orzo off. real quick. And I'm going to stir the orzo real quick. You know what's too bad? It would be really nice if there was somebody else to enjoy these with you here today. I agree. I wish someone would come on. Well, sometimes that Perhaps happens. a local elected official. <laughs> Well, she was, said she was going to stop by later today, so... Well, she did, but she's notoriously socially unreliable. That's true. That's true. But you never know. People stop by all the time, so... I'm going to get and these ready. And they their cues. I'm Hey, Connie and Chris. Oh, you did make it! Are you saying something? <laughs> what a shock. Pauline Bennett, clerk of on? Addison Township, everyone. Chris is making mussels. Oh, that sounds delicious. Yeah, so you want to have some lunch? Sure. We're just getting ready to plate, so while he starts to do that, this is the ice cream I made. Mm. I'll have some of that. Yeah, oh, I know you will. Um, this was two cups of heavy whipping cream whipped to stiff peaks, folded in a can, 14 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk, and then froze it. And it's ice cream. Look at that. And we're going to do that with our apple topping, which I'm talking about while he finishes up the mussels. Mm. Is that orzo ready to drain? Probably not. I will check it for you, darling. I think you should. Look at that. Sorry, the guest star. Oh, it smells off. like ice cream. You know what I have to get up here is a proper ice cream scoop. I had one, and the little scooper part broke and fell out, and I keep forgetting to replace it. So I'm actually using a cookie scoop. Hmm. I know. And this is another recipe that a viewer sent me. So are you ready to plate? I am. Our mussels are all open. 
turn off the back burner, please. I will dump the orzo. Might still. Can we go ahead and put this right in the bowl? Christopher. Go right ahead. Oh, wait a minute. You're putting it in the same bowl as the mussels? Just or? kind of lay down a, a little bit of it? No. No? Separate. Okay. Go for it. <laughs> wait a minute. Well, He's the chef today. He is. Well, we're going to take our mussels. Okay. Can I put this on the table here? Put it on there. Okay. So. Colleen, do you have you ever had mussels? No. Actually, I'm going to take our mussels and put them in a bowl here. Oh, look at that. Nice and open. Now I want to take some of that delicious broth and pour that in the bowl too because the broth isn't just for cooking and flavoring the mussels. You also get yourself a nice loaf of crusty bread and you can dip the broth in there. There we go. Oh, look at that. It does look nice. You want to just rip a hunk off of yeah, there? Just rip a hunk off the bread and dip it in like that. And mmm, so good. Wonderful. And now I'm going to go ahead and plate up some dessert. Here's some, why don't you put, make up a plate for Polly and she can have some mussels. All right then. And while they're doing that. Well, that was great timing. It was. Well, you said you might stop by. I was kind of hoping and we were running late, so. I was totally shocked. So make sure to totally come up shocked? and find, <laughs> come up and, uh, and see us. And we're doing all sorts of fun stuff like this. And, you know, the wine dinners and the murder mysteries and all that kind of thing. Scrapbooking. Uh, call me, 248-933-4579. Email me at stormy3958 at att.net. Check us out on Facebook which is Treetop Lodge Oxford, and our new website, treetoploddgeoxford.com. That sounds so technical. Look at that. We have fresh apple, bourbon caramel sauce over ice cream that I made. At this point, I'm wondering why we made the orzo, but it's here. We can put that a little on the side. And you guys have, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Uh, sharp noises. Look at that. That's beautiful. Well, try. Have one of your muscles. Okay. Well, I need a fork. Okay. We'll just. All you got to do is open them up and get the little bit of muscle meat out of them. They usually come out easier. Well, we'll just pull it out. There you go. Mm. <laughs> now, sometimes, if you want, you can put a little um, butter on the side, a little clarified butter to dip it in. But I don't think you need it. I think it. they've got a lot of flavor on their own. I think the stock is so... Want to grab some oh, stock? Yeah, We're just going to all eat. So join us next time. This was episode 20. Thank you so much for being here, oh, sweetie. You're welcome. Here, Chris you going to have some of that. You're going to try some of Chris that? Chris is going to be back for episode go 30. There you go. Where we're going to cook a lobster. So keep Ooh, watching. We're going to cook a lobster. We are. So join one. us again. That's episode 19 is going to start airing like today or tomorrow. And keep mm. those views up. I so appreciate it. We are up over 2,000 views on YouTube. And I'm so excited. So we're just going to keep making shows and having lunch and enjoying ourselves mm -hmm. and having guests. Having a great time. So it's if delicious. I, is, do you love it? Mm -hmm. Is it? Uh, stock. So, oh, mm. come back and join us. But not too soon because we're going to have lunch. And uh, we'll see what we're going to make next. I don't know. It's going to be hard to top this. It is going to be hard to top this. I know it. Especially with me as a guest. And isn't it nice that I made orzo? It is. And oh, and the orzo you can plate and serve on the side. Mm hmm. I was thinking of that in the bottom, but. Well, you could mix the orzo in. I'm a traditionalist. Uh, it's your dish. It's your dish, however you want to do it. So, and as usual, I'm cleaning up. Oh, that is so good. You're watching OCTV, Oxford Community Television, serving Oxford, Addison Township, and the village of Leonard. There is a place, a place where the air is pure and water runs sparkling clean. There is a place where a small, quaint village stands surrounded by vast meadows and rolling hills. 
That place is the jewel of Oakland County. It's called Oxford, Michigan. If your dream or vision is for a safe, secure, and better life for you and your family, this is your invitation to come see for yourself the wonderful experience that could be yours. It's true that many lakes, nature trails, fishing, and over 500 acres of parks attract lots of people to Oxford. But there's much, much more. Quaint little shops, small pubs, and many unique fine restaurants. Near the center of town is a white church with a steeple and a park where a live band can be heard playing from the gazebo on hot summer nights. You are easily transported into a more relaxed and unhurried time. Although the village of Oxford reminds you of years past, the warmth and pride of its hardworking residents truly sets it apart from other communities. Oxford School Board has worked with parents to provide their children with the finest education possible. The result, a modern global school system with the first world-renowned international high school program. The fifth core world language and culture program and 11 premier sister schools expanding the globe from China to Mexico. Oxford residents are safe and secure in knowing they have one of the most modern police and EMT forces in Oakland County. If your vision is to start or expand a new business venture in a fiscally responsible environment, Oxford, Michigan welcomes you with open arms. We are one of the few Oakland County communities to offer the unique one-stop program where Oxford officials make it easy for developers and builders to complete their projects from start to finish. The one-stop process cuts through financial and legal red tape, frustration that usually faces entrepreneurs as they try to get their project off the ground. If your dream is for a new business venture or a better life for you and your family, there is a place called Oxford, Michigan. Here we are in front of American Legion Post 108 in Oxford. Now, every Friday between 12 and 8.30, they serve up some of the best fish in Michigan. Follow me inside. We're going to take a look around the post. All right, here we are now on the hall side of the post where you can get tables for anywhere to 6 to 30 people. And before or after you're done eating, take a walk around and browse through the second largest military museum in the state of Michigan. All right, now we're over on the restaurant side of the post where... Most of the fun happens, as you can see behind me. They've got darts, pool tables, 50-50 raffles, and any kind of fish you can think of, bait, cod, walleye, combo plates, all right here at your beck and call. You're watching OCTV, Oxford Community Television, serving Oxford, Addison Township, and the village of Leonard.